Today's webinar will be led by Chris McMaster. Chris is a Senior Solutions Consultant here at SAP SuccessFactors. Chris, the floor is yours. All right. Hello, everybody. And again, my name is Chris McMaster, and I will be leading the demonstration today. Um, what we're going to be talking about is the SAP SuccessFactors Learning Module. Now, how we really start to think of learning, and before we actually get into the demonstration, I wanted to go over just a few slides really about everything from kind of our vision, um, how we can help customers with these kind of pain points in learning, and really what are we seeing based on some of the different trends. Now, we know that each organization that offers training is very critical. So first off, it's ensuring that you help keep your employees compliant, but also developing and improving them in specific areas. So it, one of the key things that we'll show today is we want to try and keep employees re, uh, re, retained and engaged, making sure it shows in their investment in their future. So SAP actually has a long history of learning innovation. It's a demonstrated commitment to actually embracing learning as part of our corporate strategy and really a clear vision directed for our learning solutions. For more than a decade, we have been and continue to be recognized by virtually every industry leader and every industry analyst as a leader with a very strong list of customers. And our overall, com overall vision is helping our clients create these impactful learning cultures that, again, are not just set up for your internal employees, but are also something that can be used to train external resources, whether those are clients, partners, or vendors. And how do we do that? It's not really just about technology. We do provide you the tools, the strategy, the methodologies to really kind of fulfill your own vision and business needs for your learning area. Um, we design the landscape. We want to address common learning needs. And really just making sure that, again, you have a focused investment and innovation in some of these learning solutions, which really no other learning organization can provide. And so our engagement model for learning is based on our significant experience within the market, um, the competitive dynamics, and the different buying patterns. And that's really just one of the kind of intro slides about the um, learning kind of vision as a whole. The next few slides are really getting into some of the more specifics and general concepts and areas that we'll really be talking a lot about throughout the demonstration. So the first area that we're going to kind of take a look at here is the ability to then go in and um, take what we call a learning item. A learning item for us is really anything that has educational value for an end user, regardless of ultimately how that might be delivered to them. So you can see here any number of different trainings could be set up as a learning item. These trainings can be assigned on a one-off basis to one individual, to a group of users, to an entire set of users but really trying to keep that universal approach. So as users come in and interact with something that's a virtual training, it's really the same click path to follow as I'm launching into a document or an online-based course. Now, knowing that each organization may have multiple learning items that are assigned at one time as part of a curriculum or as part of a certification, we can then take and group any number of those learning items into a curriculum, into a qualification, into a certification path, really just ensuring that if there's a specific number of trainings that a user needs to go through, they can quickly come in and have the ability to go in and make sure that all of the training taken for their employee orientation has been completed in order to get credit for that entire curriculum. You can see here this example contains a Word document, an online course, and a classroom-based training. This could be any number of different trainings. This could be an on-the-job training. And this is not only one-time training for something like maybe an employee orientation. This could also be reoccurring training. And I use the example, this could be a certification around uh, prevention of sexual harassment training in the workplace. I am in Denver, Colorado today doing my demonstration. I have a manager in California. State law, state law requires different trainings for different people in different roles in different states. So ensuring that we have all of these different curriculums that can be assigned out to people. So as we're then adding users into the system, and really the way we do that is Again, we integrate with um, all HRS systems to make sure that if you're keeping those internal records and you want to do a nightly feed of user information to make sure that information is passed over into the system, we can easily set that up. And then we have triggers that once we get these 
learning items and curriculums in place, then we can really set up what we call an assignment profile. And this allows us to then take those learning items and curriculums that need to be assigned out to users and to really build these out and say, for a specific job position, if you're brought into our organization and your job position equals, starts with, contains analysts, here's maybe the one learning item, the one curriculum. There could be multiple curriculums, maybe one's a one-time, maybe one's a reoccurring training. So ensuring that we can kind of tie all of these different requirements to certain positions, these can also be built out further to where maybe we have location-specific training that you're now going to get your job analyst training, you're going to get your New York-based training. We could also start to bring in multiple fields such, such as tenure. You see the example here of shoe size. We once did a demonstration for the U.S. Air Force, and apparently if you have a size 13 or bigger, there's some simulators you're not allowed in for safety reasons. So knowing that every organization has their very own unique requirements for ultimately how this um, training will be assigned out, even if it's a field that's not a out-of-the-box field, it can be created and leveraged just as any other field within the system, even included in reporting to make sure we can ultimately capture all of this different information about these users. So once we've set up our, our specific descriptors, we can then basically drive the results that say as users are either brought into the system and meet this assignment profile criteria, or maybe I'm an existing user and I'm changing positions, so we need to ensure that as that information changes in the HRS, that my new set of training is now assigned out to me. Maybe there's some specific training that I now have to go over if I've now moved into a manager-like role. Now keep in mind, users can also have multiple assignment profiles. So if there's multiple hats that I wear within an organization, or if I work within multiple departments or multiple states, and training requires me to take all of that necessary training, I can have as many of these assignment profiles to make sure we're pushing out the necessary requirements to each and all users within your organization. And that's really it from the demonstration. So uh, from here, we'll go ahead and get into the demonstration. We do have a you know, question and answer section if you guys do want to ask some questions as we're going. So let's go ahead and uh, pull up my screen. And once, you get, or once I pull this up, I will then start the demonstration into the learning management system. Looks like it's live streaming. Can I get a confirmation once that is visible to everybody on the, the line? Yes. All right. I can see it from the audience view. Looking good there, Chris. All right. Perfect. So what we're going to do here is log on to the system. Now, the first thing I want to point out is we do offer single sign-on, which most of our clients do utilize where a user would log into an intranet, click a link that maybe brings them into either success factors or a specific part of success factors. Um, but this is something, because we are software as a service, you can always access it via the website as long as you have an internet connection. Um, we also do have a mobile app that we'll be talking a little bit more about throughout the demonstration. But I always like to at least show the home page just to let you know that is an option. Even if I can't kind of single sign on, I do have the ability to still log on through the system if I know my username and password. Now, as we log into the system, we are coming into the Success Factors home page. So this is a page that may have a little bit more information than your kind of typical learning, um, learning only success factors connection. But as we come in, this is really going to make sure that all of the impactful information that a user sees when they come into the system is really then going to be captured. Always helps if you have your right username and password. All of the important information that's requiring this user's attention will show up on this home page. So if there are trainings that need to be taken, and keep in mind, some of these may not be options that are even seen to users because we're not using the recruiting or performance. But users can quickly come in and see how many courses are out there that are maybe assigned to them, what is coming up, if there's any sort of survey or um, piece that's requiring their attention. And you'll see with surveys, this could be even something that we're requiring you to fill out this survey in order for us to give you credit for attending this training. Now, you could just as easily drive them right into the learning section where maybe there's a link that says, oh, you're trying to access your learning. Here, click this, and we'll drive you right to the learning page. Now, just like on the home page, this is an area that is very configurable um, in terms of the look and feel, the logo, the color scheme, the background, 
all of these different pieces can be configured to really meet and match your guys kind of unique look and feel as well as keep in mind all of the naming conventions. If you would like to call this the My Training Center rather than the My Learning Assignments, these can be configured during an, during an implementation to make sure we either capture the language that you're currently using in your learning management system or just the verbiage that you guys associate to some of these different pieces. So as you can see here, these are individual learning items that have been assigned out, either through maybe manager assignment, through individual assignments, these could have different tags, whether this is part of a career and development training that was assigned to me. This could be required training that's ultimately part of a curriculum. So again, curriculums can have multiple learning items. These items can maybe have different due dates. Maybe there's a piece of training that's due the first week that you're there, the first day that you're there, the first week that you're there, the first month that you're there. All of these could have different due dates to make sure we're capturing all of those different requirements. But this is where, where you can really start to then create your central repository for all of the different types of trainings that you might be offering to your end users. So before we get into the online and instructor-led trainings, this is something that we kind of uniquely offer to all of our LMS clients. It's essentially the way, a way to take something like an HR document, something around a code of conduct that is really maybe just a PDF document, and we're currently either tracking that manually or we don't have a good way to ensure who's actually read and is compliant with any sort of document, whether it be a code of conduct, an HR, or HR employee handbook. This could be a standard operating procedure that has maybe just been revised and we need to ensure people are kind of going in and reading the latest version. This actually allows us to then take any of those non-trackable pieces of content and turn them into something that we can now assign out to users. We can also track who has gone in and actually read this with this little piece here that we call an AICC wrapper. As you can see, the text here is configurable as well as what each of these boxes say. But it's a way to take a 34-page PDF document and without putting it into an authoring tool, and creating it into an actual SCORM file, we basically loaded a document into the system, attached this AICC wrapper from an LMS administrator standpoint, and basically said, this is something I now need to be able to assign out to people. I need to have them come in and click the Agree button to move it to a completed state so I can track from a reporting perspective who's actually went in and signed off on all of these documents. This will also track how many times a user has launched this, as well as how much time an overall user spent within that document, allowing, to, allowing you to see if a user maybe came in, just clicked agree to move it to a completed state, as where everybody else actually put the time in and read that document. Now, depending on your level of completion criteria, some organizations will allow you to click agree and move that to a completed state. Some organizations will actually have you then come back in and take this kind of exam process where now, once you've signed off on this document, and you can see you can't test out of this, um, we've set it up to where this has to be completed in a sequential order. You need to sign off on this document. You need to then take this post-training quiz. It's only 10 questions, but you need to get at least an 80%. You have two tries to take it. But this will ensure that there was some sort of knowledge transfer that took place and that you did actually read and get something out of the document. Now you can take the sequential order off and allow users to test out of that where once they've passed the quiz, we're gonna record the learning as complete. It's really up to you guys as an organization. And it could be as simple as two steps. I also have a, or a screenshot of another type of training where this has a little bit more of a, a process turned on for what's maybe required from a post-course action process. So in order to get credit for, again, the, the learning item, which is called AOV 1108 number two, you need to complete lesson one, you need to complete lesson two, you need to complete the quiz that was attached from within the system. And then there were even four course wrap-up steps that, again, not all of these are required, but you can really kind of push this out to make sure that, hey, we want to ensure that we're getting user feedback on some of these trainings. So we're actually requiring the survey completion before we give you credit for that training. That's great that you pass both the lessons and pass the quiz, but in order for us to move you this to your learning history, we need to get formal feedback of if this was an impactful training. You could also go as far as recommending trainings. This could be done at an admin level where 
we bring we go back to almost the assignment profile. This isn't assigned training that's required of you, but as an administrator, knowing that you're an analyst in New York, here's the training I think might be helpful before you even go into the catalog and start searching. You can allow users to rate trainings. This often comes in um, very heavy in the external area where users are actually maybe paying for trainings and then they're rating this in almost an Amazon-style approach coming in and seeing this is a five-star rated course, I'm more likely to sign up and pay for this training than something that was maybe rated lower. Users can also even come in and print off their certificate here just ensuring that they do have all the necessary steps to kind of follow their completion requirements and move that off of their learning page and ultimately onto their to-do list, which is really their learning history here that is essentially an online repository for any training that they completed up to this point. As we come back to the My Learning page, this is really where as you come in, you can then start to go into all of these different types of trainings. So the next piece we're going to go into is an online course. And again, this can be something that is set up in any number of different ways. Here you can see we do offer um, a couple of examples of surveys. We do have Kirkpatrick's level one through three surveys out of the box. Here you can see an example of the pretest, having me come in, take a lesson, take another lesson, and then take the post-test, hopefully ensuring that I got a better score than what I knew coming in. But as users launch into any of these online courses, we want to ensure that they have as um, easiest process to get into this, so as few clicks as possible. A lot of the online courses also have features like bookmarking, so making sure that if a user has completed half a training, once they come back in, they're able to go right back to that point and pick up where they left off. They can even go in and complete the knowledge check or the assessment or exam that's generally built into all of your online trainings. Now, as we talk about online trainings, we consider ourselves very content friendly we don't care if there's specific authoring tools you've worked with, if there's vendors you have purchased training from, as long as they meet the general AICC and SCORM compliance standards, those can be loaded into the system and tracked. Um, we know there's a lot of pre-developed relationships with previous vendors, so ensuring that um, you have the ability to bring all of that content into the system and get that loaded either onto our servers or onto your own servers in order for us to be able to kind of direct learners where to access those specific files. <clears throat> As we scroll through or come back into the system, and I could go through a little bit the of the trainings. Provide a single... so, again, the trainings will really be set up to format kind of any of the different uh, features that we have. And again, the look and feel is generally set up based on the vendor. So um, keep in mind, this is just kind of a generic course that we have about uh, um, using the learning management system. Each organization can have their own uh, look and feel as well as some of the branding that they might do if they're creating their own trainings within an authoring tool. Now really the next piece to look at here is as we start to think about training, we've covered some of the document-based, we've covered some of the online-based. Now we can get into the instructor-led training. And our instructor-led training can handle many different um, scenarios or kind of requirements. Uh, here you see an example of somebody being assigned a training, and then as they, are, as they come into the system, they're allowed to go in and register for maybe the date and time that's going to best fit them as long as they can complete it before the due date. So as this person comes in, they can start to see a good description of all of the different trainings, where these are being located, if there's a minimum or maximum number of seats that are available. If they see something that's of their liking, they can go ahead and register themselves. Now, anytime a user registers for a training, they're automatically sent an email confirmation. Uh, those do include an iCal attachment. Here's an example of kind of that um, Outlook invite. This example is a little bit different, though. We do actually integrate virtually with WebEx, Adobe Connect, and Skype for Business. So you do have the ability to, when you're setting up an instructor-led training, if it is going to be virtual and you are using any of those three tools, to actually use some of the out-of-the-box connectors we have with those different vendors to set up that training once and allow your users easy access right there even within the, the um, invitation, allowing them the invite if you are allowing single sign-on, they could get their 15-minute invite from Outlook. They could open that meeting invite. They could click on the link and actually take them right into the system, kind of very similar to what we did today to, to get into the demonstration. 
So try and make that very easy for users as well as, I mean, this may be something where the instructor or administrator, when they're setting up the training, they may automatically just tell me, I want you to be here on May 2nd, and they may just not even allow me to register. They may say, you're enrolled in this training. Here's your email confirmation with your Outlook invite. Please save this into your calendar because you're now part of this training. One of the things we also do offer, which you'll see once we get to the kind of uh, my employee stage, you do have the ability if you um, wanted to allow managers to actually register users on their teams into specific trainings. I always use this example because if you're a very small team and you don't want all of your team members attend attending the same off-site instructor-led training, you can make sure and kind of sparse that enrollment out. Um, we do have a waitlist process as well where this can be determined on a um, first come, first serve, or something where maybe the administrator or instructor, whoever's really the one that's taking example or credit for that training, can come in and decide ultimately who needs to be part of that training first and can automatically move that person into an enrollment process. One of the other options you'll see within our system, especially around the instructor-led training, is having something in, say, your learning catalog, but it doesn't have a current date and time when it's being offered. So one of, the, one of the functionalities we have recently built in is the request schedule where you can actually then come in and allow users to basically come in and let administrators know, if you could do this training by the end of April, I'm in this region and this location, I would be interested in taking this training. I go on a request list. I'm never actually enrolled into the training. It's very similar to the wait list, essentially, where the instructor or administrator, whoever's in charge or responsible for that training, can come in and open this request list up and see, hey, there's finally 10 or 20 people that requested this same training in the same time frame. Let's set up a date and time and actually invite them to the training because they all expressed interest within this. So just showing you some of the options that are available. One of the other pieces I always like to show, especially with instructor-led trainings, there are course details that can be all easily, easily accessed, um, anything from maybe the credits or um, continue education hours that they would get. There may be associated re or related documents that go with this training. But I still have the ability to register, to request schedule. Um, I can even recommend this training. I could contact the instructor. One of the other things that you'll hear us talk about is we do have a functionality called SAP Jam. This is another module within our kind of foundation. This is something that has or can have a direct tie-in to the learning area. This is something that can be used for not only social collaboration, but informal learning, ensuring that any users that are maybe assigned a specific training or a specific curriculum have an internal place where new employees can kind of help each other ramp up through informal learning, through posting of documents, through posting of videos to maybe help somebody along in a certain area. So there are kind of extensions that we can add to the learning management system if you're looking for something in terms of either pre-course pre, pre work or even post-course work or even post-course collaboration where users are maybe c coming in and having a discussion board, an area to be able to kind of bounce ideas off other like-minded like individuals. So that is definitely something that can be kind of um, assigned at a learning item level. You'll also see the JAM functionality or social collaboration as we get into the catalog as well. As we scroll down the list of the kind of my learning assignments, this will really allow you to see some of the functionality that, again, some of these courses we're going to basically hold and say, that's great that you passed the basic preparedness document or training, but you know what? I need you to come in and take this survey. As I mentioned, we have Kirkpatrick's level one through three surveys available out of the box. You can allow for anonymous responses so people can feel freely to give their honest feedback and knowing that hey, what did you really think of the course materials? Were they easy to follow? As an end user, as an end user, I can come in and give my honest feedback. I have a multiple choice, a multiple select, as well as an open-ended section that I can even submit for a response. You, I've even seen organizations that have multiple page surveys. One survey is on, or one page is on the content, one page is on the instructor, one page is on the amenities that were offered throughout the training. The nice piece about this is we have out-of-the-box reports that actually allow you, after that first day of training, to run a report that gives us that instant feedback to know this is ultimately going to be assigned out to, say, all 342 people within this specific department. 
after the first day, we're already getting a three to four response that the course materials not only aren't really applicable or are they easy to follow. So do we want to make a change before this next training or are we ultimately going to put 342 people from that department through the training with 300 of them saying that the course materials weren't really applicable to what they thought they were getting? So having some of that out-of-the-box functionality, whether it's around surveys, whether it's around exams, to really offer you that detailed reporting from a manager or administrator aspect. You, as we continue to scroll down, you can see courses have prerequisites. If there's a level one training, you, the only option you have is to be able to take the prerequisite. You can launch this. Excuse me, you can click on the link here. That will actually just bring up the prerequisite and allow you to enroll. There even can be such things as line items where organizations may want you to know that you need to attend an external event. There's no actions that you can take within the system, but there is a due date attached. And this actually allows us to then talk about some of the expiration notification emails that go out to users. So as we set up these trainings and decide that once you're assigned from an administrative level, you have 30 days to complete these trainings. Each of these has a specific kind of um, set of expiration notification emails that go out, letting you set the kind of threshold and kind of um, day, number of days out where it goes. So you could start saying at 30 days, I'm going to email you every five days and just make sure that, again, you're reminded that you need to complete this training. If it's something as, as simple as you need to read this document, maybe we wait to the last week that it's due as an administrator. And every day that week, I'm going to send you and your manager an email just to ensure that you're both getting notices that you're, you have training that's coming due this week and that you need to complete it. So these can be set up and configured for each individual notification. They're not dead set at a 30, 60, 90 day process. You guys can decide how often and who those, are, those training reminders are going out to. You can see as we scroll down some of these courses that, again, are requiring my manager's approval. Maybe this is a training that's available within the catalog but requires an approval process to ensure that this is something I should indeed be spending my time in taking. There could be other trainings that, again, are is something I need to take outside of the system. We also have the ability to set up what we call programs. So programs are another way of looking at a grouping of trainings that ultimately need to be ass assigned out to somebody. This, these are handled a little bit differently than your typical curriculums. Curriculums are generally a little, a little bit more rigid. They tend to have um, specific dates and times when that training is required by. Programs really allow you to set up a training a training program that has multiple sections or multiple pieces that are attached in each section. And as users come in and complete this, they can see um, some of these may be instructor-led training. Some of these may be just information that I need to read or a site that I need to go out to. And as you can see, we can build out any number of different kind of scenarios or sections. Each of these can have its own sets of trainings. We can require them to go from one step to the other. And this is really just something that as you get into this, you can even go as far as kind of creating what we would call a cover page for this. So here's kind of the information that you would know about the training itself. You could also go as far as kind of setting up these different pieces where here's your overview to what this program is all about. And then here's the specific item details. You could see here's an example of a leadership development type program where here's some collaboration and support pieces that you may need. Here's some instructors that you need to know. Here's some of the upcoming trainings that we need you to be aware of. So these can really be built out in any number of different ways, if there's prerequisites, if there's pre-work. So it's not just really a listing of the training you need to take. It's more of a really overall kind of feel of this is what this training really entails to make sure that all of these different pieces can be kind of captured, even if it's information that we just want them to know about the instructor's profile. Maybe that's a link to their, um, their LinkedIn profile even including videos, all of this can be set up and captured. So again, it's not just a list of here's the specific trainings that you need to go through and take. We can definitely apply more information about what these trainings are, how they're going to help impact them, or how they're going to help kind of improve them in specific areas. One of the last pieces that I want to cover here within the learning assignment section is also the ability to track and um, control out of, the, out of the box, on-the-job training. So this is something that we call um, observation checklists. 
This is essentially a way for an organization to track anything that is not typically captured in your online instructor-led um, or virtual format. This is something that is maybe done on the floor where I as a manager, Tessa Walker, need to go in and see my user, Audrey Kane, go through these four steps. Now the only field that is required here is the completion field. The duration and comment section are essentially optional fields that can be turned on or off. But this requires me to go in and prove that maybe I'm competent enough to work with a specific tool. This could be something around, maybe this is part of the onboarding process. Did your manager show you around the facility? Did your manager introduce you to your work team? Did your manager get you all the necessary equipment that's required for your position? So these tasks can really be set up to capture any number of different pieces. And this is something that we actually see used very much with the mobile device, knowing that a lot of these on-the-job trainings aren't done at a desktop. So having the ability for somebody to pull this task checklist up right on their mobile device and say, okay, they completed that, I can mark them as complete or mark them as incomplete and capture that information just as if I was at my desktop kind of taking them through this. So this was something that was very much built with mobile capabilities in mind. Like I said, knowing that a lot of these on-the-job trainings are done either remotely or away from a desktop, so ensuring that you always have the ability to be able to mark people as complete. You can also go as far as determining who are going to be the actual people that can do this observation. Is this just something that's tied to a specific manager? Is there one person in the organization that can, is certified to be able to put you through this training? So there can be authorized instructors to ensure that users aren't just going out and finding a manager that they like or a buddy that can, can complete them. You can designate specific users that they have to go through in order to get certification for this training. This is also something that as we talk about <clears throat> um, being competent in a certain area, competencies is something that can definitely be as tied or associated to any different learning item. This is something that if you've seen in any of the other previous demonstrations, either from the performance or development, you might have seen we can actually go in and start to pull up the learning catalog and start to pull up training maybe by specific competency or something along those lines to make sure that if there is one training that is observational based that's going to help you improve in that area, I can quickly find this training, get it assigned out to you, and make sure that we're helping you fill that gap to, better, to get a better score within that competency next time. So that's really how users will come in and interact with all of the different types of trainings. So all of these learning items are set up and then assigned out to users. They're also then made available either from the learning catalog, which we'll get into here in just a second, or the learning history. The learning history, like I mentioned earlier, is essentially an online repository where users can come in and start to see completed trainings. I can see something from a specific date range. I can search on a specific title. I can search on a specific um, event or status. Now, the nice thing about this is each of these have um, a different status. As an organization, you could have one status that if I read a document, it's completed training. If I pass an online course, it's completed training. I attend an instructor-led training, it's completed training. Some organizations do, though, want to set up different statuses so they can see what were the certifications that they gained, what were the exams that they failed, what were the documents that they read and acknowledged. This is an also, also an area where you can kind of come in and decide if this is something like a uh, Sarbanes-Oxley or a OSHA course. Once you've achieved the passing score, we don't want you to be able to go back into this content. We're going to lock it down. Here's your certificate that proves you've taken it. But as we get into some of these other different types of trainings, we may say, you know what, as you're looking at this Credit 101 piece, we want you to be able to go back in and review this. So rather than self, re self register into that training, you can go into your learning history, launch that training that you've already completed, review a specific set of that training, and then close it out without affecting your completion status or requirements. So this is really just a nice little area, almost like a kind of um, uh, learning history, we do have learning history reports that can be made available to users if you want them to be able to run that and dump it into a CSV file or something along those lines. The other piece that you'll notice here is some of these do not have a status. This is where if your organization is actually allowing you to bring in, say, an external certificate or the, Tessa had ex attended an external, external training, here's her information that she gathered, um, here's her, actually her certificate that she brought back. So it does actually provide you the ability to, let me up here. 
It does actually allow you to create an external record that can be added to a learning history. You can even go as far as attaching that certificate. So should you ever be audited, you can indeed, indeed prove that you did have some sort of record of that training to ultimately have it or decide that it needed to be added to the learning history. As you're running a learning history report from a manager perspective, from an administrative perspective, you can choose to include just what, what was provided from a kind of catalog perspective, what was the training that you put into the system. You can also choose to include those external records just to make sure you have kind of a, an option to really separate those two facts. And this is something that can be entered by the end user themselves. This could be entered by the manager. It's really permissioning that, that's decided up to you guys. Um, the other piece I wanted to cover here real quick before we go into the learning catalog. I did kind of um, hover, just hover over this piece a little bit. This is really ways that I can start to kind of look and see if I have a lot of training like this that's assigned. If I want to narrow down and say, you know what, I just want to see the online courses, I can very much narrow this search. Or, you know what, I just need to see some of the surveys that I have to take. I can kind of select this and make sure that I'm just pulling up one part of the system that I want. Also, you, you notice that each of these have these different tags. If you have multiple assignment types, I can come in and see what is the compliance-based training that I need to complete. What is the on-the-job training that's required of me? What is some of this uh, kind of career and development training that, again, maybe if it, even if it's due this week, I'm not too worried about this because I have other things that are more tied specifically to my job role. So this is definitely something that the user can make sure that they can quickly kind of find what they need, either through keyword, they can search this by priorities. So again, if you have uh, multiple trainings that are assigned out to a user, you can give them a priority to say, this is what I want you working on first. Don't even worry about the due dates, even though we have those associated, because this is your number one priority. So really it's just a nice way to be able to kind of filter down and, and capture all of this different training to give users their own kind of ways and options of accessing what's been assigned to them or what they've even accessed from the learning catalog. So you can see here we have a tile right here on the learning catalog. And if I start typing in keywords, it's going to start to proactively bring up trainings that it thinks I might be interested in. Um, again, even if it's something that's maybe tied around a curriculum, you do have the ability to put an entire curriculum into a catalog. So rather than register for four individual learning items, I can, or I can register for all four of those at once through the sales manager curriculum. Now, as I do my search, this will then not only kind of search all of the different components of the learning catalog. This is where I may have mentioned earlier, we do have the piece that ties into the social learning or jam site. So we do have, when I first come in, you see kind of the, the the banner up here where I can start to dive into the topics. Now, these are essentially subject areas that you guys have. These can even be folders that dive one set deeper. I have a lot of organizations that within their learning catalog will set up a competency-based folder. And then once you dive into that, here are the specific competencies and the learning items that are then going to be associated with those. This is something that can be set up so each catalog can have its own specific uh, or subject areas or filters to really allow users to quickly get into the content that they're looking for if they don't specifically know a keyword, but they want to quickly come in and see that they are looking for something that's mobile-based in order to kind of uh, be able to get the right training before they maybe leave for a trip. They do have the ability to change their language and currency. Um, that's also something I, I should have mentioned when we first came into the system. We do provide language packs that are available out of the box with the system, there's no additional charge. Each user can set their own specific language, can set their own specific time zone. So even as you go in and start to look at things like the course calendar and you're looking for instructor-led training in a specific facility, it does you no good if, I'm in, if you're in London to be looking at trainings based on the New York time schedule. So ensuring that each user can actually see the, the information in their catalog in their own kind of format, whether it's language or time and date. You can, as we scroll down, you can see here's the curriculum that I've kind of been assigned. I've already self, I can self-assign that curriculum. I can get a little bit more information about that. Or this is where I can really start to expand my search. So as we start to talk about different ways that organizations might begin to populate their user catalog, they can ultimately come in and start to kind of give users all the functionality they need by tying in that JAM or social learning component, letting them know here's different documents or photos or, or user groups that might be helpful even though you might not get formal credit for it. 
As you clear this into a general search, again, removes all of the social components and then brings in all of your different trainings. Now, we do integrate with several out-of-the-box um, content vendors with our open content network, um, from Coursera to Udacity to Harvard Mentor. Um, these are all trainings that if you're interested, can be brought into the catalog. You can basically start to then break these down by the different types of trainings, by the different delivery methods. If I, have ju if I just want to see the trainings from one specific vendor, I can really narrow that down and see all of the trainings that Harvard has within our catalog. My favorite piece about our system is, again, as I'm breaking these trainings down, I can see the start course option. A lot of systems, you have to enroll it to yourself. You have to go back to the My Learning and find it. Our system's intuitive enough that if you see something within the learning catalog, you can jump right into it from here. I can always come back and clear that search to make sure I'm finding the necessary training either based on the delivery method or some of the different topics that I want to search. Like I mentioned, we also have a course calendar if I want to come in and just see some of the instructor-led trainings that are going on in more of that course calendar fashion. Knowing we have about 15 minutes left, I do want uh, to cover a little bit more from the learner perspective and then dive into the manager functionality. This is an area where as we come in, again, we talked about some of the different tiles that you'll start to see. There are different approvals that can be set up as users are coming in and requesting internal training, re requesting external training or external training. Um, we also have an account request where we have a lot of organizations for those external feeds. Maybe there's people that are actually requesting an account into your system in order to be able to come in, take, and pay for training. All of those can have specific approvals that are tied to those. You can have multiple approval steps to make sure if there's an external training that needs to be signed on by multiple users, we can have that set up. Some of the other pieces that can be very helpful as well, the ability to set up what we would call quick guides. This is a way that you can actually come in and set up all of these different steps, whether it's around forklift inspe inspection. And you know what, here's something that we want you to have as a reminder. This isn't training that's required of you, but again, this is information that we think might be helpful. Here's your cover page with just some of the general information. Here's some of the first steps we need you to take in inspecting the forklift. Here's some of the things we need to make sure you're going over. You can start to add steps, but this is really just a nice little piece that, again, can be accessed on a mobile device. Maybe I'm out in the field and I forgot how to do this real quick. I can come in and access these quick guides to get the quick information that I need. And this is something, like I mentioned, is mobile friendly. So this is um, easily accessible. I can pull this up and start to see, you know what, what are some of the steps I need to go through in order to submit an expense account. And they can start to publish those to different user sets and different catalogs to make sure people have kind of all the information that's going to be useful for them. Even as we get out of kind of the, the catalog section, we can start to bring in what we would call collections. Collections are really just a way that you can start to promote trainings. Maybe there's external OSHA courses that, again, you want people to know about, and we want them to have access to this through, through these different areas. Maybe here's a different area where, hey, this is based on leadership. This is based on development. These are all set up by the learning team, but it's just different ways that you can ultimately start to promote all of these different trainings that go out to users because we know each organization has different sets of trainings that they're trying to um, kind of develop for that uh, um, in engagement to make sure people are coming in and having all the right interactions with the system and making sure it's as easy as possible for them to come in and access, whether it's a collection, whether it's a quick guide, whether it's recommended trainings that we've set up. Again, trying to make your, your life as easy as possible where you can come in and flip this around and get more information, Maybe we're even trying to promote certain trainings that are going on this month. So we've created a flash-based um, tile that allows you to then drive, click on the link and drive right into the catalog to make sure you're then kind of seeing what's the latest and greatest or what's some of the newest um, concepts that my organization is trying to push out to me. Now, from here, I really want to then kind of dive into the My Employees tab here because this is something, as a manager, when I first come into the system, this is probably the first thing I go to, knowing that I have somebody that's overdue. I need to quickly come into the system, see who that person is, and have a talk with Audrey to see why she is still not registered for a training that's already two days overdue. So this really gives the manager kind of that quick insight without needing any sort of administrator involvement to come in and basically see where users stand with the training, even if it's something along the lines of a kind of um, observational or a 
continue education-based training. So as a requirement, you need to maintain a specific number of hours. Here is your training, here's your pool of courses, and I just need to make sure that you maintain that number of hours. You could go as far as bringing in equivalents where maybe there's an instructor-led item and a um, online version, and you're going to basically allow users to come in and choose which one's going to best fit your learning style. We don't care which ones you take, just make sure you do two of those in order to get that completion credit. As I start to expand this out, this is all brought in from your HRES system, so basically that, that supervisor tag allows me to then build this out to access all of these different users without ever needing to create trainings. This allows me all the functionality of a manager to assign training, to report on all of these different aspects. Now, as we get into some of the reporting pieces, this could be anything from just a standard set of reports on show me the curriculums assigned out to one specific user. This could be something around pulling in organizational dashboards, and we actually have out-of-the-box dashboards around pie charts, around bar charts, around um, line charts, to really give you quick insight into some of the information that may be impactful to you as an administrator, to a manager. Um, this could even be something where we have a report builder where you're actually allowed to go out and build your own kind of one-off reports in this traffic light approach to make it nice and easy for managers to see who's overdue or coming due within 30 days. So the system does allow a lot of flexibility in terms of how some of this information can then be reported on, whether it's um, training that was done within the system, whether it was records that were done externally. As we get into some of the administrative functionality, and that's definitely something if you're interested in seeing a little bit of a deeper dive into the system, we can definitely kind of set that up and go more into some of the administrative functions and really talk about how that can be permissioned all the way down to making sure some people only have administrative access but to be able to come in and reports on, say, their department or one location because they're the head of that department or location. So this is really an area where managers can come in and start to have a lot of the same access that they did. If I need to take action for my entire team, I can come in and run these different kind of reports. I can run an entire team report. I also have the ability to pull up information on each individual user. And again, if I want to assign Audrey into a specific training, hey, you're not going to take the initiative and register. I'm going to go ahead and push you into this date and time. Here's your email confirmation. You're now part of this training, and I want to make sure that you're there. If Audrey has came back and she's given me a certificate that says, I need to get this external cert or certificate added to my learning history, I can quickly come in and get that added and make sure it's something that should be a, a added to her learning history. This is also something that as we start to talk about these different kind of pages, there's a page here that can be built around achievements. We have a lot of organizations that want to bring in gamification and making sure that users know, hey, you're, you're being rewarded for your training. Here's a list of kind of badges that you've got, or here's the number of points you need to succeed to the next level. Each Completing each training may give you a specific point. Um, just an, it's something we see a lot of organizations doing, even creating something like an instructor tab where ensuring that I have all the information I need as an instructor. Maybe I still have some administrative capabilities, but maybe this is the only functionality I have and I can come in and manage my students, I can manage attendance, and really just make sure that I can do what's required of me without having to go into that administrative uh, side of the system. Now, real quickly here, I just wanted to pull up one more aspect. Um, I know that uh, Mobile is kind of at the forefront of a lot of not only what we're doing, but a, what a lot of um, organizations are kind of thinking of how they're going to start offering learning. So I have a quick little video here. There's no sound, so don't feel like you're, you can't hear anything. This is really just showing some of the functionality that we already talked about, letting you see how you can come in and interact with a document on your phone, click Agree, and have that move off of your to-do list the same way it would as, as you, had you launched it from a desktop. This piece here you can see you can actually start to download content. So if I'm going to be away from a training site, I can actually download that to my device. I can handle all of my registrations, my withdrawals to make sure if there is a maximum number of seats, I want to open that training up for somebody else in order to make sure they can kind of they can attend that if I don't want to. Um, you can actually go into the learning catalog. So the same way I came in, I can start to see some of these different trainings. If it's an external one, maybe there's a cost associated. I can quickly assign trainings to myself. 
I can access the learning history on my mobile device the same way I can. I can come in and see the certificate acknowledgement. I can even come in and access the instructor-led portion of the system to make sure we're trying to make instructors' lives as easy as possible. One of the, the key things is ensuring that they have a place to not only manage their users, but um, we also have the ability to register with QR codes. So you'll see here in just a second, um, as users are maybe coming into a set or a classroom setting, we have a QR code on the phone that we're just capturing this to ensure, okay, we've captured your QR code, you're here, you will get a, a credit for attending that different training. So knowing that mobile is at the forefront of a lot of what we're doing as an organization, this is something that continues to be built out um, in each release throughout the year. So um, I know we have about five minutes left, and I wanted to kind of leave about five minutes for question and answer. So I will go ahead and stop here and turn it back over to uh, Jesse for kind of uh, some of the next steps that we might be uh, taking. So. Wonderful, Chris. Thanks so much for the demo. Uh, we'll jump straight into Q&A in a second here. Just want to lead you up to the poll question we've got here on your screen. If you're interested in a one-on-one -on -one demo, go ahead and click the Yes Radio button. If you're not, click No. No worries. I'll leave this up for a question or two, but let's dive into these questions we have in our queue. All right. Chris, can you have a single sign-on and still have users be able to log in via a website so that they don't have to VPN onto the network? Yes, you can. Excellent. Lightning round. We're going to do this. Next, All right. where, do you con where do you configure stuff like my learning assignment title? Is it on provisioning or an instance? That is done on the instance level from the administrative side. And again, that's something that um, if, you, if you need to have multiple instances with multiple, multiple verbiage, you can definitely kind of provide that just to make sure that, again, the, 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 language, or the lingo kind of fits um, the terminology that you guys use in, as an organization. Excellent. Is it possible to limit uh, what users can take on the mobile app? Absolutely. When you're bringing in those mobile courses, you will decide which courses are mobile capable, which ones are no longer um, mobile, um, no, mobile friendly, if it's something that's maybe heavily reliant on a specific kind of desktop version, making sure that that's not even an, an option for somebody to take. Brilliant. And real quick, I'm going to just change the slide so people can see the upcoming sessions we have in our webinar series. Still have more Q&A for Chris here, but want to let you see we've added 12 new sessions to the coming weeks, so definitely come check that out. There's a link in your resource list. Back to the questions. Does the SuccessFactors learning platform integrate with lynda.com? Lynda.com is actually one of the vendors that we do work with in the Open Content Network. So if you have Lynda.com courses, they can integrate very similar to the way you saw from the Coursera and Harvard Mentor. It's really just setting up that connector to bring those, cattle, or those trainings into the catalogs. How does the connection to external training providers for official certifications such as PMP work, is it possible to connect to any provider? We can connect connect to any provider. I mean, we get into a little bit of a uh, further discussion then around what information can be passed back either through APIs or um, if that information needs to be brought in from an external system around the completions. You can definitely launch it from one system. We just need to have a little bit of a further discussion on how we're ultimately going to track completion around how that information gets back into the LMS to update. Great. Some WBLs may not be mobile ready. Is there a checkbox to make it available for mobile, and if not, to check not to appear? Correct. It really is a checkbox to decide if this court or if this content is mobile enabled. Brilliant. Okay. Is the look and feel based on the Fori platform upgrade? Yes, yeah, so the, the look and feel is very much based on this Fiori kind of platform. That, um, this kind of the look and feel, as well as um, we do have a, a piece called the um, le the Learning Marketplace, which um, you may have heard about. But for external learning, that is also um, branded with the Fiori look and feel to make sure you can kind of create that unique experience um, to to really make it very personalized for your users coming into the system. Excellent. A quick note that we have recorded today's demo, and we'll be sending out a link to the full, pre, uh, the full replay in the next week or two, so you'll get that in your email. We've got two more minutes left, so we're going to try and get to the last few questions we have here in the queue. So Chris, 
Is it possible to get a report or a list of training taken by an employee linked to competencies from their job profile and so that way the manager can review during their performance management dialogue? There is, I mean, it, with the system, if you are using multiple, um, multiple instances, um, maybe not with an out-of-the-box report, but we could definitely kind of add in with the ability to kind of um, export reports. We could certainly add in the learning history and any competencies that were assigned to that. Um, one of the things I did want to mention is at, if you are looking at kind of ultimately bringing this into a performance review type area, this is something that can actually be accessed right there in the performance review. If you notice a competency that somebody's weak on, you can create a development plan and you can search the entire catalog or you can search by that specific competency to see what individual trainings are tied to that competency. Great. And we're going to throw one last question at you before we jump off the call. Does this integrate with performance and or career development modules that I've seen in previous demonstrations? It 100% does. So like I was just mentioning, um, in the performance review, you can actually kind of create a place that, again, lets them know this is what you are rated in the previous year, this is the plan that we have for you for next year, and here's the training that's going to be associated with that. As you get into the career development, it's a place where users really start to kind of take their own career into their own hands. We have something called the career worksheet where organizations can actually allow users to see what are some of the future positions, what are some of the skills needed, um, what are some of the competencies I'm going to need to improve on if that's ultimately something that I'm looking at as maybe a next step within my career path. Fantastic. Well, we've reached the top of the hour. I want to thank you all for joining us today. A big thanks to our speaker, Chris McMaster, and to you, our audience. We thank you for your time and participation.